The Commonwealth is a voluntary association of 54 independent states, working together towards shared goals of democracy, development and peace. Member countries span six continents and oceans, from Africa to Asia, the Americas, the Caribbean, Europe and the South Pacific. The Commonwealth is seen as a special family, a family of nations. Barbados is a sovereign island country in the Lesser Antilles. Outside of the main hurricane belt, it lies between the Caribbean Sea and the North Atlantic Ocean, northeast of Venezuela. A large area of Barbados is circled by coral reefs. The west coast of coral shore beaches mesmerizes visitors with an expanse of white sand and calm turquoise waters. While on the wild Atlantic east coast, the lively surf pounds the rocky shore. Mostly flat, Barbados has a rolling terrain of limestone hills, lush flora and fauna, and a vast array of caves and underground lakes. Some historians claim that the original name for Barbados by the indigenous people was Ichiruganaim, with a possible translation of red land with white teeth. The origin for the later name Barbados is unclear, but according to traditional folklore it means bearded ones and may relate to the island's bearded fig trees with aerial roots. In the late 16th and 17th centuries, the Spanish and Portuguese briefly visited Barbados. However, it was the British who established lasting settlements there. Captained by John Powell, the first English ship arrived in Barbados in 1625. By 1627, the first settlement began in what is now Whole Town. From the arrival of the first English settlers in 1627 until independence in 1966, Barbados was under uninterrupted British governance. During the early years, the majority of the population was white and male, with few African slaves. The cultivation of tobacco, cotton, ginger and indigo was handled mainly by European indentured labor until the introduction of the sugar industry in the 1640s. Sugarcane completely transformed the society and economy. Indeed, the sugarcane industry in Barbados grew to become one of the largest in the world. By 1660, Barbados generated more trade than all the other English colonies combined. This continued until 1713, when it was eventually surpassed by larger islands such as Jamaica. As the Barbados economy grew, the island developed a large measure of local autonomy. I think the success of the economy meant the success of the planters, meant the success of the ruling oligarchy. That gave them a capacity to have influence in Britain itself, political influence, and therefore in a sense to say this was our place. Uh, that is demonstrated in the political conflicts of Britain itself. For instance, the Cromwellian uh, episode, where Cromwell took over you know, from the Charles I and so on. Uh, the Barbadian planters actually resisted the, 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 the Cromwellian regime. And Cromwell had to send naval forces out to Barbados and there was a shootout off Oystings. And Barbados made a declaration in which the language in that declaration, some people say, inform the language of the Declaration of Independence of the, the American colonies. Barbados has one of the oldest constitutions in the Commonwealth. The Office of Governor and the Council were introduced in 1627, and the House of Assembly was constituted in 1639. What was unbroken in Barbados was a parliament and an assembly. But these early assemblies uh, coming out of the 17th century and so on would have been with a very limited number of people voting for them, and that continued right into the 19th century. Uh, very few people up to the beginning of the, of the 20th century, very few people were voting uh, because they, they would have been property franchise and, and both in relation to what, who could go into parliament and who could vote. So a very small number of people then were actually involved in voting and having representation. So if representative government in that sense was very limited. The, the, we started to break through with some expansion of the franchise immediately after emancipation and that allowed for the first non-white Barbadian to enter parliament which was Samuel Jackman Peskill in 1841. 
For decades, politics in Barbados was dominated by the plantation owners and merchants of British descent. Now, Barbados had the old representative system and it normally had strong influence over the Windward Islands and Tobago. And um, the, it was felt that it, the administration would be efficient, more efficient, if Barbados could be the headquarters with the governor of Barbados and the Windward Islands and you have a Crown Colony government system. And they sent out the Irishman, John Pope, Pavilion Hennessy, as the governor to implement this policy. And he was very skilled, a very skilled troubleshooter. He came out and he was actually a very popular governor at first, in his first moments at, in presence in Barbados. And then he started his campaign for Crown Colony government. And the plan, the interest and consciousness was so keen that they picked it up immediately that he was where he was going. And they started to resist him, even to the extent of public meetings, holding public meetings and so on, to say that the governor was trying to impose, take away their rights as, again, as Englishmen and their right to rule the colony, and that they understood the colony better than the Englishmen anyhow. A rebellion ensued between the planters and the masses. So in fact, this was a rebellion that was going on with the governor's name as a slogan to mobilize people on behalf of the governor, on behalf of Crown Colony government. And it was resisted then by the planters and the revolt became quite widespread and severe. Um, and the governor eventually panicked because he thought that the, pop, the, the rebels would move to Bridgetown and sack Bridgetown. Very traditionally, in Barbados, when rebellions like that took place, they will run to St. Anne's Port, which is up the road, the, the garrison. They will go there or also in Carlel Bay, going ships off Carlel Bay, and hope that the militia and the army could take care of the rebellion. And that is more or less what was happening. And uh, the military eventually had to be committed. Uh, the planted militia was very active, and the, that is how the rebellion was put down. And uh, on the basis of that, the planters in that sense had won because they saved the governor. So now Pope Hennessy in that sense had failed and a compromise had to be worked out. So the compromise became the 1881 Act. The executive committee functioned in a similar way to ministerial government. Then, by the mid-1930s, party politics began to develop from within the trade union movement. In the post-1937 period, the role of the representatives of labor, uh, which were the, formed the content of the mass democratic parties that developed in the 1940s, they were carried on to the executive committee in 1946 in what is called the Bush experiment. And in a sense, it was the beginning of ministerial government in Barbados. But we did not push for the full adult suffrage until the 50s. So then it is the party of Grantley Adams, the Barbados Labour Party, that dominates in the 40s and into the 50s. And in the mid-50s, towards the mid-50s, there's a breach in the Barbados Labour Party, and out of that comes persons who form the Democratic Labour Party. The Federation then intervenes in 1958, and Grantley Adams is um, recruited more or less then to go to lead the Federal Labour Party, in Trinidad, in the federal parliament, as prime minister of the West Indies. It means that the, he, as leader of the Barbados Labour Party, is removed. And he did not choose a very effective uh, second, a very effective lieutenant to take over from him. After the collapse of the Federation, the Barbados government under Errol Barrow resolved to seek independence. With the collapse of the Federation, that is a significant blow to Grant Adams. Um, um, it is almost like the destruction of his political career. But he returns to Barbados anyhow, and he gets back into Parliament in the 66 election. At independence in 1966, Barbados formally adopted the Westminster parliamentary system of government. It functions as a constitutional monarchy and a parliamentary democracy. Queen Elizabeth II is the head of state, represented by the Governor General, and the Prime Minister is the head of the government. The Constitution provides for a House of Assembly of 30 members and a Senate of 14 members. Uh, we feel that the time has come when we need to uh, repatriate our Constitution. We feel that the time has come when we need to 
grapple uh, with the issue of who should be our head of state. And we are quite satisfied that the time has come when we have offered Barbadians to serve at the highest level across the world, that we should ensure that they can certainly serve at the highest level within our nation. And therefore, we, we as a party have, have always argued that the time had come for Barbados to have its own head of state. Errol Barrow was appointed the first Prime Minister of Barbados in 1966 and served for 10 continuous years. Between 71 and 76, the economy went into crisis. The social democratic philosophy went into crisis as well um, across the world, partly because of the weakness of the, of the economy. So you, you could no longer, if you use a parochial kind of term, you could no longer milk the system in the way that you could assume, we would have assumed before the 1970s. So the dollar crisis and the oil crisis, uh, where the militancy of the Arab nations in relation to their resources rose up in the, that period between 71 and 76. This impacted globally and affected a number of parties, social democratic parties around the world, including Arabar, and therefore by 76 he was in trouble. Tom Adams succeeded his father, Sir Grantley Adams, as leader of the BLP. In the 1976 general elections, the BLP defeated the DLP, returning to power for the first time since 1961. The BLP remained in government for two consecutive terms. I, I think people see um, Tom Adams as strengthening the financial system in Barbados. Um, he also did a lot of reform in the tenantries in, in terms of land ownership. and. Uh, he, he, he was a modernizer, uh, brought in structures that the, the National Barbados National Bank was introduced at that time. So a number of financial institutions that became strategically important for the development of the Barbadian economy on new terms, um, he, he was able to do. And um, the, I don't have all the details on those policies, but I know that those were some of the outstanding ones that uh, people note that the Barbados Democratic Party um, brought in at that time. And Adams was seen as a very effective modernizer. I don't think he, he was never as popular as Barrow, and he was never as loved as Barrow. He was seen as an efficient politician who, if you got on the wrong side of him, that he could, he could deal with you. And people, more or less, were very cautious of offending him. Um, between 76 and 86, of course, you also have the political crisis in terms of the maturing of revolutionary politics in the, in the Caribbean. So the Grenada Revolution happens at the end of the 70s, and then that goes into crisis before 83. So that, um, or by 83, and Tom Adams plays a big, plays a big role in that, both in coming to terms with the revolution and then in the brain down of the revolution when it had its internal crisis, uh, he played a leading role. The, as you would, might know, the United States forces used the Grand Adams Airport as the lift off, the base to lift off from, to go down to Grenada. Um, so up there was like a military airport with the American forces. And Tom was in full command of that. In May 1986, after 10 years in opposition, Barrow was re-elected as Prime Minister with a landslide victory. Barrow came back to office. Barrow was, in a sense, revived after Tom Adams' death. And uh, there was significant crisis in that election. I remember that Don, a politician, Don Blackman, who was a very effective platform speaker, left the Barbados State Party at very short notice although he was threatening to do it, and went over to the Democratic Labour Party. And uh, the meetings were massive, and the defeat was massive of the Barbados Labour Party. And it was like a, a whole coming back in great force of Errol Barra. But of course, he was much older, and he was also by that time ill. So um, he, he lasted a year, and then died of a massive heart attack. Barrow was succeeded by Deputy Prime Minister Erskine Sandiford. Sandiford led the DLP to victory again in 1991. And uh, he was able to carry 
the vote in the 1991 election, but after coming out in the 1991 election, Barbados went into economic crisis, a tremendous economic crisis that had to go to the International Monetary Fund. And uh, some very significant negative policies were carried out then, like the uh, percent cut against the civil service, and there was tremendous antagonism with the, the, with the workers' union. There were massive demonstrations in Bridgetown. And then there was a constitutional crisis because Sanford was not handling his cabinet very well. And he became very stubborn in his behavior in relation to some of his cabinet ministers. And eventually the, the timing of the Barbados Labour Party, the Barbados Labour Party now under um, the Owen Arthur's opposition leader, um, they decided to go for make a challenge against him in terms of vote of no confidence because they had inside information of what was going on in the cabinet and in the Democratic Labour Party leadership. And when they had the vote of no confidence, four members of the Democratic Labour Party voted with them and the government was defeated. Early general elections were held in September 1994 and the result was victory for the BLP. Owen Arthur was appointed Prime Minister and served for 14 consecutive years. The, the, Bar the Barbados the Party after 94, they did very well in 1999 because when you, could, you normally see, even after the two-party system, after the first term, even though the party doesn't fall, you see a swing developing against them. In 1999, strangely, the swing kept going to the Barbados Labour Party, and they strengthened themselves. And that was when I mentioned that there was a whole lot of talk about republic and so on, and nationalism, nationalism was recaptured um, by the Barbados Labour Party. By 2003, they had not followed through on the momentum that came to them in 1999. Uh, I think that, therefore, by 2003, you could see the swing had started to, to move against them which was like normal. But the, that legitimacy that was self-evident in 99 now was not quite there. And it, that negative swing continued from 2003 to 2008. The BLP lost power in 2008, winning only 10 seats. David Thompson was appointed the sixth Prime Minister of Barbados and served until his death in October 2010. Thompson was the third sitting Prime Minister of Barbados to die in office. Thompson was succeeded by Frendel Stewart, who is the current Prime Minister. If you look at the statistical data, you will see that the difference between the two parties was relatively close. And certainly some of us felt that it could have gone either way and that the that Barbados Labour Party could have held on. They did not. And that is because normally in a swing in Barbados, you don't pull it back. So if it is going in that direction, it keeps going to the opposing force. And that would have been the Democratic Labour Party in opposition, therefore coming into government, which is what happened. However, what we are seeing now, five years after their victory, where they are struggling as a government, with a 6% swing against them, sufficient to bring them down, demonstrates that the victory was very close, that they did not win by uh, the numbers that would have been, might, might have been assumed because of the severe critique that was carried against the Barbados Labour Party. So that, in a sense, it, if you want to be harsh on them, you could say that they succeeded with very effective propaganda, and, but it was shallow, and that consequently, the, well, there were, it was sufficient to get the government out, it was not sufficient to really destroy in any significant way, lasting way, the Barbados Labour Party in terms of keeping them out of office for a long time. 